We certainly do say praise the Lord, praise the Lord, praise the Lord. Truly, this is the day that the Lord has made, and we shall rejoice and be glad in it. We certainly do thank and praise the Lord for another day's journey, for another day's opportunity to partake of his great mercies. The scripture says it is of the Lord's mercies that we are not consumed, because his compassions, they fail not. They are new every morning. Great is thy faithfulness. And God is faithful. Hallelujah. God is faithful to us on today. And we certainly do thank God for his faithfulness. And God is not uh, one to forget your labor of love, your faithfulness that you've shown toward his name. So we certainly do praise God on today. We want to say praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord, everybody. And I'm so excited on today because it's a beautiful day outside. The sun is shining and it's relatively warm. I was driving to church today and I see that the trees, uh, they look like the leaves are starting to bud, so to speak. And uh, I was in front of the church today, saw a big fat bunny rabbit. <laughs> and uh, that lets me know something. They're coming out of hibernation and they're coming out of hibernation uh, not skinny, but they're coming out of hibernation fat. And that lets me know that the Lord, he takes care of all of his creatures and all that he has created. The Lord is mindful. And that reminds me of the scripture that talks about even the lilies. The lilies God takes care of. And he's mindful of the lilies. Uh, he'll be mindful of you. So we certainly do praise God once again. And I thank God that you're all coming on online uh, with us on today say something to let me know that you're there and we certainly do praise God for his greatness and his mercy and uh, my name is uh, Suffolk Bishop elect Frank Quinn uh, lead pastor here at Christian Ministries of the Apostolic Faith Church and we certainly do thank God for all the leadership that are here on that our Christian Ministries and uh, we're caring fellowship to lead souls to Christ and we want to strengthen our members and strengthen our families. We want to make disciples. Thank you, Lord. And we want to prepare them, equip them for service and community ministry. So if you want to be a part of the kingdom of God, this is a good part of the vineyard to operate in. Uh, we are on the move, and uh, we thank God for all of our members that uh, support this great ministry. Uh, we thank God for the love, the love that the saints have one toward another. You, well, you'd be surprised. You're probably not surprised, but you'd be surprised how many people say, I can't wait to come together. I can't wait for the saints to come back into the sanctuary and lift up the name of Jesus. And I tell you, I can't wait to see the smiles on your faces so that we can lift up the name of Jesus. And I told one person, I said, I wouldn't mind if we just praised them the whole service. Hallelujah. When we came back together just to give God glory and to thank him for all that he has done. So we want to certainly go before the Lord in prayer. And we want to pray for men and women and children everywhere that the Lord will continue to save and add to the church daily such as should be saved. And let us pray for all of those that are uh, going through those that have loved ones that have been affected by this pandemic and not only that but have other conditions and situations that are going on. I realize that uh, though the pandemic has taken the forefront of prayer but there still are other needs there still are other desires that need to be met that need to be prayed for and we thank God that God realizes and understands these things so therefore, uh, he's open to our prayers. So let us pray for all conditions, all situations uh, across this world. Pray for me, pray for our leaders, amen. Pray for uh, our government officials. And you know, sometimes, um, you, uh, let me say it this way, a lot of reckless things are being said on Facebook uh, concerning salvation and concerning uh, the way of right living and especially in these times. Um, so let us pray for understanding. Let us pray that the Lord will grant us understanding, that we will focus on that which needs to be focused on 
and that's the unity and getting ourselves ready uh, for Jesus Christ, that we love one another, that we'll support one another and get away from all reckless banter that causes division and strife. And as we um, look to the Lord, let us pray. Gracious Father, in the name of Jesus, we pray, Lord, that you bless this service, that you bless each and every request that's been made known in the name of Jesus. We ask you, Lord, that you have your way in our midst. Open up our understanding. Let your glory be made manifest. Bless our Sunday school lesson on today. Hallelujah. Lord, let your will be done. Father, we thank you and praise you and give you glory and honor. Lord, you blood wash us, that you cleanse us and purge us from all unrighteousness, every word, thought, deed, and every secret thought. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Amen. Praise the Lord, everybody. Uh, once again, this is Christian Ministries of the Apostolic Faith Church, 501 West 31st Street, Erie, PA, 16508. Thank you, Lord. And we want to... Uh, want to give thanks and I praise God for you all tuning in this morning. Uh, we want to continue our services as much as normal as we can. So that's why we're coming online and doing our, our Sunday school. I love Sunday school because Sunday school is a school of higher learning. It's a school of higher learning. And people that tune in to Sunday school, they get a little extra that those that don't tune in for Sunday school. In other words, they get a bonus. And I thank God, I need bonuses. I thank God, I need his word. We need the bonus of the Lord. So um, our lesson today is found in um, the book of Psalms, Psalms chapter number two. And, um, and it goes from Psalms chapter number two, verses uh, 1 through 12. The division of Psalms 2 verses 1 through 12. And our subject today is a very uh, appropriate subject. It talks about the victory of the Lord's anointed. The victory of the Lord's anointed. And the reason why I say it's a very appropriate because um, we're coming off of our Easter celebration. And anyone knows that Easter celebration dealt with the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ, gaining us the victory, uh, gaining us the victory, uh, and we have victory through him. Victory over what? Victory over sin, victory over ourselves, victory over the power of the enemy, uh, victory, total victory, spirit, soul, and body, victory over diseases, victory over emotional hurts and pains. You name it, you got the victory in Jesus. <laughs> victory over poverty. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. It's all in Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Everything that we need is in Jesus. And he gives us victory. The book of Corinthians says, Thanks be to God that giveth us the victory through our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. So that's our subject today. It says victory of the Lord's anointed, the Lord's anointed. So um, as we begin to look at our <clears throat> lesson here on today, um, we certainly do uh, thank God for this opportunity, this opportunity to stand before you. It's a humbling experience for me to stand before God's great people and um, I thank God, and you pray for me, that the Lord will grant unto his servant the door of utterance, that we would not just speak words, but words that can encourage you to strengthen you for your walk with the Lord. It's all about uh, your walk with the Lord. It's all about your maturing, your growing in the grace that is in Jesus Christ. So pray for me as I pray for you. And, I, and then the book of Psalms, uh, chapter or division number two and verse number one. It says, why do the heathen rage and the people imagine a vain thing? And what I like about this psalm is the fact that it starts out with a question, a question of why. And literally, this is a rhetorical question, a question that the Lord is answering, answering, ask, asking 
but he already knows the answer to. And he just wants to start a discussion. Uh, Jesus used this even in his ministry. He would ask a question just to generate discussion. So, uh, and, and the question is asking why? Why? Why um, do the heathen rage and the people imagine a, the, a vain thing? And when we look at, I like words. Words um, have meaning and we should study words. Uh, the etymology of words, the meaning of words. And he says, why do the heathen rage? And a heathen is a non-religious person, a person that, that does not acknowledge God and God's existence, does not acknowledge God or his existence, an atheist, if you will. And they live by... Uh, a code of conduct that does not include God. And that's what a heathen is. And specifically in this particular uh, verse, it's referring to a person that is not a Jew, a non-Jewish person that does not adhere to or, or follow after Jehovah. Jehovah meaning the Lord God. And notice what it says. It says, why do the heathen rage? And this Rage means to have violent, uncontrollable anger. And uh, forgive me uh, in, in chuckling a little bit, but uh, I ask that same question. You know, when you understand something about the Lord, you know, you wonder why people have temper tantrums with the Lord uh, because um, their temper tantrums or their anger cannot avail them anything concerning the Lord. If you're mad or angry with the Lord, it, 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 it does not move him from his faithfulness, and it only affects you. Um, that's what Jesus told uh, uh, the beloved apostle Paul. He said, why do you kick against the pricks? Uh, the pricks meaning it was a goad that, that uh, the farmers used uh, to move the animals or the oxen uh, when they have stalled, when they have, uh, they stop moving forward. And every time they kicked a the prick, it didn't hurt the, uh, the, 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 the farmer. It didn't hurt um, uh, him in any way, but it hurt themselves. Uh, it hurt the oxen that was doing the kicking. And the same way, uh, if an individual does not uh, put their trust in God or is angry with God, it doesn't hurt God, but it hurts themselves. It hurts themselves. Anytime that we have a problem or are enraged or angry with God, it, it doesn't hurt him, but it hurts us. So therefore, uh, having this knowledge, it's better for us to be at peace with God because God is a God of love. God is a God of understanding. So it says here, why do the heathen rage, notice, and the people imagine a vain thing? And what the, the problem was, was that um, they were um, contemplating plans uh, to be free from God's dominion or God's reign. In other words, when it says imagine a vain thing, they were contemplating plans in their own mind to be free from God, to be free from the dominion of God. And um, uh, that's what this particular scripture is saying. It says, why do the heathen rage and the people imagine a vain thing? Why are people imagining to be uh, rid of God's dominion, God's authority, God's power? Um, that's what the enemy did uh, to Adam and Eve, especially Eve, when he visited her in the garden and, and asked her about the fruit that was in the garden and um, uh, telling her that, you know, if you eat of this fruit, you're going to be wise. You're going to be like God, knowing good and evil. In other words, he was telling her that you'll be free from God's dominion, from God's protection. And a fool uh, would uh, a person that doesn't have comprehension or understanding, 
they would want to be free from God's dominion or from God's uh, power, uh, not knowing that it is God that is all powerful, that has all rule, that has all authority. So um, that's what these uh, uh, people were thinking in their minds. In verse number two, it says, the kings of the earth set themselves and the rulers uh, take counsel together against the Lord and against his anointed. And that word there, the kings, the kings of the earth uh, set themselves. And that's a, a military term, meaning to set a battle in array. In other words, it means to gather the forces together and let's go and fight against God. Uh, how, uh, <laughs> how, how silly does that sound? How can you get an army together and fight against God? That tells you that an individual has really lost their mind. Uh, you forgive me, I'm a little biased here today, and I'm trying to teach the le lesson in a subjective kind of way. But, but when, I, when I, I'm listening to the words that come out of my mouth, and then me knowing something about God, I'm interjecting my own thoughts and feelings and ideas. Y'all forgive me. But it says here that the kings of the earth, they set themselves. They set themselves, meaning that's a military term, um, and rulers to take counsel together against the Lord. And that, that phrase there, when it says the kings of the earth, and then they say they take counsel together, that's a reference to all authority, all power that is, that is gathered together on the earth will fight against God. All authority and all the power will take counsel together to fight against God and against his anointed. Uh, that word Lord, that word Lord means uh, when it's referred to God, that's his name in the Hebrew meaning Jehovah. Uh, and, and, and that means that he's the, the, the Lord over all. He's the Lord over heaven and earth. He's the creator. Uh, over heaven and earth. He has all power. He has all authority. And when it says it takes uh, 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 against counsel, against uh, the Lord and against his anointed, it's talking about Jesus. He's the Messiah. He's the anointed one. Uh, that anointed, that word there, anointed, means Christos, or which means uh, the Messiah which means the anointed one, the one in whom is the anointed king, priest, and prophet. Hallelujah. And uh, it is God's anointed one that was prophesied uh, over that it would come from the loins of David, that he would sit on the throne of David and rule for over David's throne forever in Jerusalem. So he says here, the kings of the earth, they set themselves and uh, the rulers take counsel together against the Lord and against his anointed. And uh, they say that, uh, verse number three, it says, saying, let us break their bands asunder and cast away their cords uh, from us. In other words, they were trying to, they viewed themselves as being slaves unto God and they wanted to free themselves from God's cruel and unjust slavery means. That's what was going on in their minds. So that's what the scripture is saying that uh, these individuals, they say, let us, let us break the bands asunder. In other words, let us break the cords of his oppression. Let us break the cords of his dominion over us. Uh, and let us cast away the cords from us. In other words, let us cast away his authority. Let us cast away his power. Let us cast away his rule over us. And my, the more I say that, the more in my mind I'm thinking, what is wrong? <laughs> When anybody wants to get free from God, something is wrong. 
If anybody wants to run away from God, something is wrong. You can't run away from God. God is omnipresent. God is everywhere at all times. God is all-knowing. God is all-seeing. He knows our thoughts from afar off. Thank you, Lord. So therefore, it was be like uh, Jonah. Jonah had it in his mind that he was not going to do God's will. So he decided that he was going to get on a boat and run away from God. But when he left the dry land where God was and got on the water, God was still there. And God uh, caused a test to come upon Jonah. Uh, and that storm came and then they ended up throwing Jonah overboard and a prepared fish swallowed him up. And he stayed in that fish for three days and three nights until he surrendered. Thank you, Lord. Until he surrendered. And when he surrendered, the fish spewed him out of his mouth. See, you can't hide from God. You can't do battle with God. Whether should an individual fight with God and win? You can't fight with God and win. God is too powerful. His thoughts are not our thoughts. His ways are not our ways. Thank you, Lord. And there's nothing that we can do to outrun him, outdistance him, outthink him, and out and out and out battle him. God knows. God knows. He's a winner. <laughs> Thank you, Lord. So uh, he says, let us break their bands asunder and cast away their cords from us. And notice verse number four. He says, he that sitteth in the heavens shall laugh. Now, that God says, I'm going to laugh from my throne. The throne of the heavens is God's throne. Thank you, Lord. God is going to laugh or make mockery of them from a high and lofty place. That would be like uh, a, a, a one-year-old baby trying to come up to me and fight me. Uh, <laughs> That would be like a one-year-old child trying to come up to me and fight me. Uh, uh, there's no way that that child can win. Nobody who comes up to try to fight against the Lord and against his anointed, which is Jesus Christ, shall win. It's a fixed fight. Even the devil, the devil, in all of his power, in all of his uh, given authority, he cannot win against the Lord and against his anointed. And he cannot win against all of anybody that's on the Lord's side. It's a fruitful battle. And the enemy knows this. That's why the Bible says that he knows that he only has a limited time on this earth and that he's going to try to wreak as much havoc as he can. But through Jesus Christ, he has been defeated. And God is exalted, and Jesus Christ is Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. And that's why, you know, we ought to have this in our mind. Uh, though the enemy may fight, but he shall not win. Hallelujah. Because the Bible says that the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty through God, through the pulling down of strongholds. You can defeat the enemy because he's already defeated if you use the weapons of warfare that God has given you. That's why the scripture says, put on the whole armor of God that you might be able to stand. How? Stand against the wiles of the devil. My God, you got to know. You got to know your rights. You got to know your authority and you got to use the power that God has given you uh, to gain the victory in your life in all areas of life. Spiritual, emotional, physical, financial, all of the even biological. God is on the throne. So we see here, it says here that uh, he that sitteth in the heavens, he shall laugh. Uh, he shall laugh because he realizes that this is, this is silly. This is foolishness uh, because we're talking about the Lord God Almighty. <laughs> he says, the Lord shall have them in derision. In other words, he shall make mockery of them. 
And throughout this particular lesson, um, it's, it's styled as there is no contest, that it's, it's not a fight, that it's not a battle. Though they try to come and fight against the Lord, whoever, it's not really a fight, it's not really a battle, it's a sham, it's, it's, it's mockery, it's, it's, it's foolishness. Anytime that we get in our minds that we can defeat God, it's a sham, it's foolishness, it's mockery. Anytime the enemy thinks that he can defeat you through Jesus Christ, it's a sham, it's foolishness, it's a mockery. Hallelujah. There's no way that he can win. There's no way that he is able to defeat you if you operate in the blood and the power of the Holy Ghost and the blood of Jesus. No way to win. If you stand fast in God's word, no way for the enemy to win. If you put on the whole armor of God, Ah, if you pray, if you fast, if you seek God, if you tell the truth, live this thing, walk by faith and not by sight. There's no way for the enemy to win if you hold on to God's unchanging hand. He's already defeated. The battle doesn't belong to you, but the battle belongs to the Lord. You've got to understand that, brothers and sisters. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. My God, I'm getting encouraged. <laughs> Hey, hallelujah, just by talking about this lesson. We see here then, notice, he says, then shall he, uh, verse number five, then shall he speak unto them in his wrath and vex them in sore displeasure. In other words, the Lord is going to rebuke them, uh, those that fight against him. Those that think in their minds, the kings and the rulers, the enemy, spiritual darkness, those that have it in their hearts that they're going to come up against the Lord and against his anointed, he's going to rebuke them. He's going to rebuke them sharply. He's going to vex them. Thank you, Lord. That's why, you know, uh, we should be at ease in Zion, knowing that uh, he that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of of the Almighty, because the Lord God is with us when we stand to defend his name. That's why David was so successful when he went to Goliath. He, he came to a fight, he came to a sword fight with some rocks, hallelujah. My God, how you gonna go to a sword fight with some rocks? Thank you, Lord, uh, unless the Lord is on your side. <laughs> Hey, he took one of them stones and threw it at Goliath and gained the victory. When you trust in God and believe in God, all you got to do is show up to the battle. And the Lord will rebuke. Ah, he will rebuke the enemy off of your life. He will rebuke the hand of the enemy that is trying to stop you from advancing and moving forward in the kingdom of God. He'll rebuke death. He'll rebuke the devourer. All you got to do is trust in the Lord. Commit thy way unto the Lord and he shall bring it to pass. Trust in the Lord. My God, my God. Hallelujah. And notice verse number, verse number six. It says, yet have I set my king upon my holy hill. And, and this is a reference to Jesus Christ. The king of kings. And the Lord of Lords. And notice what it said. Notice what it said. God himself is saying, I have set my king. <laughs> and if God be for you, who then can be against you? We're talking about Jesus. He has appointed uh, in his foreknowledge and decreed and declared, my God, from his infinite wisdom, that Jesus Christ should be Lord. And he should be the Messiah, the Deliverer. My Lord, not one that was made with hands, ah, but one that came to a virgin Mary that was overshadowed by the Holy Ghost and that was born holy. Hallelujah. He was born with the victory. My God. Hallelujah. Notice what he said. He says, I have set my king. Thank you, Lord. And this is validation to the, to the kingdom of, 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 of Jesus Christ that shall crush and destroy all other kingdoms. 
my God. And when I say that, I'm saying that in a future sense. And when, when Jesus comes back to establish his kingdom upon this earth in his, in his reign. Thank you, Lord. My God. But, but right now, in a spiritual sense, thank you, Lord. All the kingdoms of darkness, all the kingdoms of this world have no power over the kingdom of Jesus Christ. The Bible says that we've been translated into the kingdom of his dear son. Hallelujah. When, you, when you're in this kingdom, you got power. You got legitimate power. You got legitimate authority. Hallelujah. To tread upon serpents and to walk upon scorpions. To lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. You got power when you're involved in this kingdom. Hallelujah. This kingdom has power. This kingdom has glory. This kingdom has honor. So you got to put your confidence. You got to put your trust in the Lord. So the Bible says here, he says, yet have I set my king. Notice, he's been set. That means that he's been appointed. He didn't take this by usurping authority. He didn't take it by usurping authority. It was given unto him. That's what Jesus says. All power and authority has been given unto me. Hallelujah. He, he received it in a right way. He earned it through his obedience by, by humbling himself unto death, even the death of the cross. And the scripture says, thereby God has highly exalted him and given him a name above every name. That at the name of Jesus, every knee has got to bow. At the name of Jesus, every tongue has got to confess things that are in heaven, things that are in earth, and things that are beneath the earth, they got to bow down in humble submission to Jesus Christ, to the Lord's King. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. To the, we ought to clap our hands and give God a praise in this midst of this atmosphere. Hallelujah. I know you feel the Holy Ghost. I feel the Holy Ghost right now. Hallelujah. That's power in the name of Jesus. And we're talking about the victory of the Lord's anointed. The victory of the Lord's anointed. And Jesus, he gained us that victory on Calvary's mountain. Hallelujah. When he went to Calvary, he suffered and he died. Hallelujah. He gave his life as a ransom for you and I. He gained us the victory. And the manifestation of that victory happens in two parts. When he got up from the grave, he got up with all power. And when he ascended up on high, he sat down at the right hand of God, expecting till his enemies be made his footstool. And then he sent back the Holy Ghost. The Holy Ghost gives you power, a manifestation of the victory that is in Jesus Christ. My God, my God. That's why Paul said, there is therefore now no condemnation to them that are in Christ Jesus who walk not after the flesh, but after the spirit. For the spirit of life that is in Christ Jesus have made us free from the law of sin and death. For what the law could not do in that it was weak through the flesh, God sending his own son in the likeness of sinful flesh and for sin, he condemned sin in the flesh. Why? So that the righteousness of God's law, so that the righteousness of God's will, so that the righteousness of God's word can be fulfilled in us. I thank God for the victory that's in Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. So we see here in our scripture, my God in heaven, hallelujah, the Holy Ghost is moving. The Holy Ghost is real. Thank you, Lord. The learn of God. The Bible says that the words that I'm speaking unto you, they are spirit and they are life. Hallelujah. Jesus said, you are clean through the word that I'm speaking unto you today. My Lord, you can live. Hallelujah. Because he lives. You can do all things through Christ. Ah, that strengthens you. My God, there's victory in Jesus. Notice, he, verse number six, we in Psalms Chapter number two or division number two and verse number six. He says, yet have I set my king 
upon my holy hill, Zion. And Zion represents the holy place. Uh, 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 Zion represents God's capital city, which is Jerusalem. Thank you, Lord. And the Lord, when he comes back the second time, he's going to reign there in Jerusalem after he establishes his millennium kingdom. And he's going to reign forever. Hallelujah. In Jerusalem. It's going to be the capital city. And let me say this. I've got to say this. That uh, 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 President Trump, thank you Lord, when he declared that Israel is a, a nation, my God, he was literally being used by God to establish that as a, 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 the capital city, hallelujah, of, of Jerusalem. They're going to establish Jerusalem as the capital city of Israel. So, so it's already being in the midst. It's already beginning to happen. My God, that should let us know that Jesus is soon to come. If you read and understand your Bible, you'll see and understand certain events that are taking place. And it's all a setup for the coming of the Lord. It's a setup for the coming of the Lord. My Lord, hallelujah. We can go into many of things uh, saying all that. But I want you to understand, brothers, holly and sisters, that, that Jesus is soon to come. The word of God is being fulfilled. There's wars and rumors of wars. There's, there's homosexuality and, and lesbianism. It's being rampant here in, in America and across the world. Uh, people are hating one another. People are killing one another. Those are just signs of the times uh, that Jesus is soon to come. And the kingdom message, the gospel, is being preached. Uh, and he's using Facebook and, and all those other medias to get the gospel of Jesus Christ out there uh, to various people and so that they can hear the word of the Lord. So we, the Bible says, when we see these times or these days approaching, hallelujah, we should not be dismayed or be discouraged, but we should look up. For our redemption draweth nigh. We should get our lives in order because he's going to come as a thief in the night for some people that are not watching and that are not waiting and that are not ready. Hallelujah. You got to be ready. My God, you got to get baptized in the name of Jesus and you got to get filled with the precious gift of the Holy Ghost and walk a walk of faith being free from sin. My God. Cop your hands and give God a praise. Hallelujah, my God in heaven. Notice the scriptures he said, Yet have I set my king upon my holy hill, which is Zion. Uh, notice verse number seven. I love this verse. He says, I will declare, declare and the decree. I will declare the decree. The Lord have said unto me, Thou art my son, this day have I begotten thee. And from here, the tone of, uh, I'm going to just say, from verse 6 and 7 on down, the tone of the message changes. Now, if you can just imagine and go with me uh, to a courtroom now. Thank you, Lord. A place of authority, a place of power. Uh, if you can just imagine being at the throne room of God. Hallelujah. God is saying, he's saying, I will declare. To, to, to declare means to say something in a solemn, in a clear, in a forceful fashion. It, it means to say something bold and direct and that has meaning, that has power, that has authority. Hallelujah. Notice what he says. I, have, I will declare and decree. A decree is, 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 is something that is said to validate a point in a formal setting. So the Lord's saying, what am I about to say now? I'm validating it by my rule and by my authority. I'm validating it by an oath of declaration. Hallelujah. My Lord, in other words, you can't get no higher than the Lord and his Supreme Court. My God, and God is making a declare, a declaration and a decree. 
And notice what he's saying. The Lord hath said unto me, Thou art my son. Hallelujah. The Lord is saying to Jesus Christ, Thou art my son. This day have I begotten thee. And the Lord had repeated those words uh, on the Mount of Transfiguration when he was contemplating and, and talking about Jesus. He's saying, Thou art my son. Hallelujah. My God. The Bible says, God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. We remember in the book of Isaiah, Isaiah chapter number 9, hallelujah, he said, unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given, and the government shall be upon his shoulders, and his name shall be called Wonderful, Counselor, Mighty God, Prince of Peace, Everlasting Father. And he said, of his kingdom there shall be no end. Hallelujah. He was letting us know, hallelujah, that his son, Ekadaboshata, hey, hallelujah, all power, hallelujah, in him rest the Godhead, hallelujah, in him has all authority, in him has all power. And God himself was declaring it, he is decreeing it by his own authority and by his own power. Notice, my God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Now, let us look here. And I love it when he said, um, uh, this day I have begotten thee. In other words, God had begotten Jesus Christ as his only begotten son uh, through Mary when she was overshadowed by the Holy Ghost. Amen. It wasn't by the will of man. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. It was by the will of God. It was by the will of God. So when Jesus was born, he was born sinless. He was born holy. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. And so that way he can become a perfect sacrifice for you and I. My Lord, my Lord. Now notice the scriptures. Ah, but that Jesus has this a power. He has this authority. And he's the legitimate heir because Adam and Eve sold us out in the Garden of Eden uh, and lost our dominion. And notice what God said. Let us make man uh, in our image and our likeness and let him have dominion. Let him have dominion upon the earth. And, and Adam had that dominion, but he lost it when he uh, uh, gave in to Adam. So Jesus had to come down, the Bible says, through 40 and two generations being made like unto you and I. Thank you, Lord. That's why he took on flesh and blood. Uh, that's why he was tempted in all points, like as you are, but yet without sin. My Lord, that's why he can be touched with the feelings of your infirmities. He knows you because he was made, hallelujah, of flesh and blood. My God. So, so that he would be able to regain that authority that the devil uh, gained from Adam and Eve. Hallelujah. In other words, Jesus took back that authority. Hallelujah. That's why he said, all power, <laughs> hey Lord, in heaven and earth has been given unto me. All power, my Lord, hallelujah, is in Jesus Christ. And when you're in Jesus, you have legitimate power. You have a legitimate authority to have dominion upon this earth. You've got power over the enemy, power over the devil, power, hallelujah, over uh, those things that would try to wrestle you away from God. You've got power over chemicals, over cocaine, over alcohol, over those forces that would try to take you away from Jesus. You've got power. My Lord, hallelujah. All right, let's move on. My God in heaven. You got power over diseases. My God, you can lay hands on yourself. Oh, my God. And declare and decree I am healed oh, through the blood of Jesus. I am delivered through the blood of Jesus. You can decree it and you can declare it. 
in the name of Jesus. So we see here then, uh, verse number eight. Hallelujah. We're almost finished. We got about 15 more minutes. We see here, uh, verse number eight. Notice. <laughs> Hallelujah. Uh, first, let me read verse number seven again. He says, I will declare and decree, the Lord hath said unto me, Thou art my son, this day I have begotten thee. Now notice verse 8. It says, Ask of me, and I shall give thee the heathen for thine inheritance, and the uttermost parts of the earth for thy possession. In other words, uh, he was telling, uh, God was telling his son, the anointed one, that, that as a part of your sonship, you, you have a right. You have, you have a legitimate authority. That, in other words, he was saying that, that as part of your sonship, I'm going to give you the world. I'm going to give you everything in the world, and I'm going to give it to you as an inheritance. Oh, my Lord. I'm going to give it to you as an inheritance. And Jesus spoke about these things, that he has an inheritance. Paul spoke about it, that I got an inheritance. Uh, he, told, he, told, he told Apostle Paul when he recruited him to, to preach in his name. He said that I'm sending you to open the blinded eyes, to, to preach deliverance to, 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 to the blind and to the captive. And notice, he said, and so that they can receive an inheritance, my Lord, forgiveness of sins, and that they can receive an inheritance. What inheritance? The inheritance that comes along with Jesus Christ. And we are partakers of that inheritance. But I said that to say this. Notice what he said. Ask of me, and I shall give thee the heathen for thy inheritance. I, I said earlier that a heathen was a non-believer, a non-follower of, of, of God. And we were all heathens at one time. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We were all unbelievers at one time. The scripture says that all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. And I thank God. Hallelujah. That's why, you know, we should not kill our babies. That's why, you know, we should, because they are God's inheritance. That's why we should treat people uh, with, with love and respect. Why? Because they are the Lord's inheritance. Hallelujah. And, and, and no matter uh, how dirty and filthy and how, how, how deep in sin they are, it's Jesus that died. It's Jesus that rose again for their salvation and for our salvation. That's why the Bible says, judge not and ye be not judged. Don't look down on an individual. Don't cast them down. Hallelujah. Help to lift them up because they are God's inheritance. Hallelujah. It's Christ that died. I didn't die. Hallelujah. You didn't die. My God, you didn't pay the price for that individual, that heathen, that one that you look down upon. Hallelujah. It is Jesus Christ that died. And the scripture says, verily, uh, for a man would one die per adventure, for a good man some should even dare to die. But God commended his love toward us in that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for the ungodly. Hallelujah. And we are, my God, are his inheritance. And, and the heathen, those that are unbelievers, are the inheritance of Jesus Christ. My Lord, oh, my, man, I'm getting excited. Why? Because if you look, if you look at what his commission is, go ye out in all the world and preach this gospel. Hallelujah. And, and convert people, my God, baptizing them in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Ghost. And you do that by baptizing them in the name of Jesus. And he said, and teach them. Hallelujah, so that they can become disciples, so they can continue my mission, continue my goal. You remember what Jesus said? Hallelujah, I'm about to close here. You remember what Jesus said when, 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 after he had showed himself alive uh, 40 days to his disciples, 
He told them to go to Jerusalem and to tarry there until they be dued with power from on high. You remember what he said? He told them, thank you, Lord, that you're going to be baptized. John barely baptized you with water, but you're going to be baptized with the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. And they asked Jesus a question. They said, at that time, are you going to restore the kingdom? Huh? He said, it's not for you to know the times and the seasons for which the Father has placed in his own hands. But he said, but you shall receive power after that the Holy Ghost has come upon you. And this is what he said, and ye shall be witnesses of me in Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, and the uttermost parts of the world. Once you are converted, huh, go get some more heathen. Go get some more people, hallelujah, and bring them to Christ. That's why you have been empowered. That's why you've been set free. That's why you've been delivered, so that you can be a witness. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord, my God, so that you can be a witness that Jesus has power, that Jesus has authority. That's why the scripture says that we are living epistles to be read of all men. Hallelujah. We got power. We got authority. That's why we got to watch what we say. We got to watch what we do. We got we to gotta be ambassadors for Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, my God. Let us move on quickly. Thank you, Lord. Notice, verse number nine, and he says, Thou shalt break them with a rod of iron. Uh, thou shalt dash them in pieces like a the, uh, like a potter's vessel. And here he's talking about those that are opposing Christ. Those that oppose God, those that oppose his anointed are going to be crushed. And, and this crushing here is representative. They're going to be crushed and at ease. They're going to be crushed with no power, no, no problem. Amen. They're going to be destroyed like crinkling up a piece of paper and throwing it away. Hallelujah. Those that stand against God, those that stand against God and his anointed, even those that fight against you because you're declaring and decreeing the righteousness of God. They, God is going to stand. God is going to fight for you. God is going to deliver them. Hallelujah. And he's going to cause you to be more than a conqueror through Christ Jesus. Hallelujah. My God. Anybody that fights against God is fighting against Christ. Huh? And anybody that's fighting against you is fighting against Christ and his father. Hallelujah. You've got to realize that. Hallelujah. My God in heaven. Hallelujah. I wish I could put on my bishopric hat here. Thank you, Lord. I tell the church. You've got to be submissive to your pastors. If you're not submissive to your pastors, you're fighting against Christ. Hallelujah. You're fighting against Christ when you, when you rail on your pastor and don't submit to his authority. Because his authority doesn't come from him. It comes from God. Hallelujah. My God. Hallelujah. My God. Let us look here deeper in the scripture. Verse number 11. Notice what he says. This is what an individual should do. He said, serve the Lord with fear and rejoice with trembling. In other words, he's telling them to submit. Submit to the Lord. Amen. Notice verse number 12. It says, kiss the son. Least he be angry and ye perish. And that's a, another way of saying, showing respect. When you come to the king and you kiss his ring or his kiss's hand, that's a sign of submission. That's a sign of, of submitting to his authority. And that's what he's saying here to us about Jesus. Kiss the son, submit to his authority, lest he be angry and ye perish from the way when his wrath is kindled but a little. Notice verse, uh, the, the, the last part, he says, blessed are all that put their trust in him. Blessed are everybody that put their trust in the Lord. My Lord, we thank God for this lesson on today. Hallelujah. And this lesson is about uh, submission to the victory that is in Jesus. Jesus gained us the victory. And those that fight against the Lord, 
Uh, they're gonna, they're gonna, they're gonna be destroyed. Those that fight against you, when you proclaim the name of the Lord, they're going to be destroyed. Hallelujah. So don't worry. Hey, Lord. Hallelujah. Trust in the Lord. And I want to say this. Thank you, Lord, to all of our Christian ministry members. My Lord, uh, the church still has to go on. The light bills and the gas bills still need to be paid. And you still need to be blessed. So we want you to send in your tithes and your offerings. Your tithes can be uh, electronically submitted through Tithely. You can mail it into Christian Ministries, 501 West 31st Street, Erie, PA, 16508. Or you can come and put it in our drop box. It's locked. It's secure. Amen. Various means uh, to, to, to give unto the Lord. And I want you to share this video. Uh, share this information with everybody so that everybody will know. Hallelujah. The gospel is being preached. That Jesus Christ is Lord. Hallelujah. And that the devil is defeated. Uh, let, us, let us stay tuned to our 11 o'clock service. Hallelujah. We're going to have our praise team out here. They're going to worship and praise and give God glory. And we got a message from the Lord. Hallelujah. We got a word from the Lord. Yeah, glory. We got a word from the Lord today. My Lord, I'm excited today. Thank you, Lord. I'm encouraged today. Hallelujah. My soul doth magnify the Lord. I feel like Mary. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord, when she met up with Elizabeth. Hallelujah. And Elizabeth baby jumped in her womb. She said, my soul doth magnify the Lord because he hath done great things. <laughs> Hey, glory. The Lord has done great things for you and I. We ought to rejoice in the Lord always. The Bible says, again, I say rejoice. Hallelujah. So let us be encouraged. Let us prepare our hearts. Let us get ready for the next level in God. God bless you. Shalom. And have peace in your hearts. In Jesus' name, amen. Hey, good morning.